How long will you exist for? It's a very interesting question, but the answer changes depending on how you would define existence. Let's begin with the simplest and probably the most common way to define existence. You die, you don't exist. In that case, the first fact that should cheer you up is the fact that you are now living longer than your ancestors. It can clearly be shown here from this chart that shows you that you are now existing more than your ancestors. Right? Not necessarily. It turns out that life expectancy measures take into account infant mortality, babies dying. And that means that the data gets skewed. It turns out that in old times, if you lived to around 40 years or so, you were pretty much set for life. Pun intended. So that might be a disappointing fact to you. The fact that you're not really existing more than your ancestors. But speaking of ancestors, what if we define existence in a different way? What if we define existence in terms of lineage? The traits that you pass on to future generations through making babies. Because as you know, if you make a baby, you pass on your traits to that baby, and then that baby grows up, pass on its trait to future generations, and so on and so forth. It turns out that that is an excellent method to lengthen your existence. In this article here, it was calculated how much of your genome do you inherit from a particular ancestor. And it was found that after about the 10th generation or so, the probability of you passing a genomic block to a particular grandchild approaches almost zero. This means that after about 10 generations, your influence on the gene pool becomes less and less and less. And at that point, you could say that you have ceased to exist. So you extend your existence using this definition with a number that is in the hundreds of years. But what if you are forever alone? Then it sucks to be you and me. Unless we define existence in another way. And the way we're going to define it right now is the physical manifestation that makes up your body. In this definition, even if a single individual atom that was a part of your body is still around here in the universe somewhere, this means that you continue to exist. This definition will allow you to exist for a really, really, really long time. But before we go into that, here is a fact. Did you know that 98% of the atoms in your body are replaced each year. This means that if you lived around a hundred years or so, there will be 98 U's floating on Earth and maybe even space somewhere. And those atoms, give them enough time and they will become part of many other future people that haven't even been born yet. So this means, by this definition, your existence will become entangled with other people's existences. But that doesn't matter, because those atoms will outlive so many things that the time scale we're talking about here is absolutely unbelievable. We get another Permian-Triassic mass extension event that wipes out 99% of life on Earth. You continue to exist. We get an asteroid 100 kilometers in diameter that strikes the Earth and wipes out all life. You continue to exist. 7.6 billion years later, when the sun is going to swallow the Earth and actually swallows it, you will continue to exist. By this definition, your existence will depend on how the entire universe will end. You see, in a universe that is continuously expanding at an accelerated rate, which is the generally accepted approach for how the universe is going to continue to be like in the future, your existence will depend on whether protons can decay or not. If it turns out that protons can decay, then you will continue to be here, your atoms will continue to be here for around this many years. And in this many years, the probability of any matter existing in the universe will be almost zero. However, during that time, it is possible that some of your atoms may end up inside something else, and that is the singularity of a black hole. And a black hole will continue to be here for a really long time, even longer than the period I've shown you earlier, at least for the supermassive ones. A black hole with about 100 billion solar masses will take around a Google years 
to eventually dissipate through Hawking radiation. When that happens, we could safely say that you have ceased to exist. But what if it turns out that protons can't decay? Then in that case, you will continue to be here for a period of time even longer than what I have just described. You see, it is assumed that after about this many years, ordinary matter through cold fusion will fuse into iron 56. And at that point, a new type of star will be born. And that type of star is called iron star. Now, iron stars have a lifetime that would terrify even black holes. Between around this many years to this many years, they will eventually collapse into black holes, which, as you know, through Hawking's radiation, will dissipate later on. And after that point, we could safely say that you have ceased to exist. So what I just described to you is the longest possible time for you to exist in a universe that is continuously expanding at an accelerated rate. But what if it turns out that that is not the case? There is this theory called the Big Crunch. It is not the accepted approach for how the universe is going to continue to be like in the future, but it is still possible. And it says that the universe expansion will eventually slow down and then contract back in on itself into an infinitesimally small singularity, which you will be a part of. Okay, so what then? You see, it is possible that that singularity will expand into a new universe, which will expand and then collapse. And then another singularity will form. And that singularity can expand and then collapse. Expand, collapse, expand, collapse, expand, collapse. And this could happen an infinite number of times. This means just by chance, just by probability, there will be many universes that will have a galaxy that looks exactly like our Milky Way galaxy. And within that galaxy, a star will form that looks exactly like our sun. And around that star, there will be planets that look exactly like the planets in our solar system. And one of those planets is a planet that looks exactly like Earth. And on that Earth, events will happen exactly the way they happen on our Earth. And eventually, there will be somebody who looks exactly like you, who will be watching a video that looks exactly like this one. And in that video, there is a person that looks exactly like me, telling the person watching the video, thank you very much, and I will see you next time.